Paula Bianca is a Broadway powerhouse actor and singer from right here in our Pittsburgh area. And she's most known for her starring role of Maureen in the Broadway show Rent. And behind her music and her performance is even a greater story of faith. She's joining us now to talk about her life and career and how God has carried her through it all. Carla, we're so glad that you're joining us today. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thanks for having me. It's such yeah. a joy to have you with us. And I just yes. want to hear a little bit about your upbringing and how did you discover the talent you had for singing and music and for dancing in the arts? Oh, wow. Um, well, you know, it really started when I was four. Uh, I used to sing for my next door neighbor, um, Philadelphia Freedom by Elton John, and um, she would give me brownies. So that, that started that way. And then um, my next door neighbor had a graduation party and the, the brownie giving uh, neighbor was there. And I went and she said, oh, Carla, why don't you sing for everybody? Sing us a song. So I did, I, I sang Philadelphia Freedom and somebody grabbed a styrofoam cup and passed it around and everybody put money in it. And I remember with that cup going home and thinking, wow, this is, it was this a is revelation, really, right? <laughs> this is really <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I really been singing my whole life. Oh, yeah. that, that is such a, 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 I love that story. I love singing for brownies. Well, that's a great idea. <laughs> but tell us about, about what was your spiritual journey like? You know? it, it, it's something. I, I, I uh, was always close to God. Um, I, I used to spend a lot of time in my basement writing music. And it was always music and God, music and God. Um, I would write letters. I would call God my best friend. Um, and, and tell him the things that I wanted in my heart, what I had in my heart. And my prayer was always, Lord, I know you gave these gifts, talents, but not my will, your will. Uh, let me know what your will is for my life. That was always the prayer um, through the whole entire journey. And I just listened, you know, even if it didn't make sense or... Um, it, it, it seemed like something that would, you'd have to be really brave to do. I thought, well, I, I got, you know, God will be with me. This is something I have to do. And it was kind of a, a wavy journey um, with, with singing and music and, and God, really. It was all, all along the way. Tell us a little bit about that wavy journey. I mean, was there a moment where God was like, I want you to go and pursue Broadway? Or did he give you something in your spirit? You're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Tell us a little bit about your journey getting onto that big stage. Oh, yeah. So the, the, what was always in my heart was the songs. Because I started writing when I was 10. And I, uh, that was a big part of the prayer, the, the singing and the songs. And God, what, what do you want with all of it? And uh, I wanted to move to New York because that's where everybody moved. And I remember thinking, oh, how am I, how am I gonna get to New York? Because I'd never been there, you know, my parents never, we, we never went. I mean, I honestly thought that um, Broadway was a cobblestone street paved in gold, you know, like the Wizard of Oz or something. I, I really had no idea. And um, I applied to NYU in secret to the jazz department because you could do that via cassette. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself now. <laughs> but I learned how to sing jazz uh, by a, a wonderful uh, jazz singer, Maureen Budway, who, uh, rest in peace, she's from Pittsburgh. She taught me how to sing jazz. And I applied in secret and was praying and praying about, Lord, is this something that is meant for me? And I got this letter. And then I told my brother and my sister and they came to my parents with me and they, they, uh, they said, you got to let her go. It's, it's a great school. So I did. I transferred to NYU. And from there, I knew the Jelly Bean Benitez who discovered Madonna. Again, you know, I'm from Italian descent. Here's her making it big. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just wait for him to go to work. It was spring break. I was in New York for two months. I found out where his office was. And I said, I'll just wait for him. So I was there for three days. I mean, I would go home and go to sleep, but then I come in the next day, made friends with a security guard, and he told me the jelly bean always came in around 11 o'clock and wore a black suit and white tennis shoes. I really had no idea what he looked like. And the, the third day, I was sitting there, and I'm listening to my music and my Walkman. I'm dating myself again. And here he comes walking down the street, and I see the, the white tennis shoes and the black suit. I'm like, oh no, what, what if that's him? So I walk into the building, Jelly Bean, and it's echoing in this big marble lobby, Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean. And he turns around, I say, hi, 
My name's Carla Bianco. Uh, I've been waiting for you for three days. Can I have 10 minutes of your time? I just want to show you what I can do. And he go, he's staring at me, staring at me, and he goes like this. So I go up in the elevator with him, and I sit down and play a song that I wrote on the piano. And a week later, he called me and um, offered me a management deal, a production deal, and a public sheet, wow. publishing deal, and one of my songs to be on his next record. And that's how I broke into the music business. But that doesn't answer your question. That's what I mean about the windy <laughs> road, right? Because um, I was in New York for a, a, a good bit, um, playing in bands and, and writing with all these great songwriters with this publishing deal. And then I moved out to Los Angeles because I had this calling to write this musical, well actually to write these personal songs mm -hmm. about my life that started to form a song cycle that started to become a musical. Now mind you, I did major in musical theater, but I didn't pursue it, right? I go to LA, a friend calls me, and she says, oh, there, did you hear about this musical Rent? It just won the Pulitzer Prize and the Tony. I said, no, I have no, I, I know. She goes, they're coming out to LA to do the West Coast premiere. There is a part in you for, for there is a great part for you. You should audition. I said, I don't know. I'm doing my own songs and all this. And then I prayed about it and prayed about it. I was in the library and there was backstage uh, saying audition for rent. And I just, I said, you know what? I better go. So I brought my boom box and a song that I, one of those songs I wrote, those personal songs that was in the musical and got called back seven times get this call to be um, the understudy for the part in the ensemble. Well, within two weeks, the girl that was playing the part lost her voice, and I, oh, I, after the matinee, they called me into the production office and said, you have to go on tonight. We hadn't had any rehearsals yet. I was just praying and working it out in my dressing room, you know, the, the, what I had to do, and went out and ended up taking over the role and then they asked me to come back to New York and do it on Broadway and then I was really in this community of theater artists and performing Broadway off Broadway shows and really roundabout, you know, <laughs> but that's how God works. He, he really works in those mysterious, like unexpected ways and it's, it's um, just to g trying, you know, to go encourage to, to listen and, and move make yeah. moves yeah well wow, i mean i i think that hearing that voice in such a, a, a different kind of way is so important but you wrote uh, you're going to share some music with us in a little bit just very quickly you wrote a lot of this music on your new ep during the pandemic right yeah. during the lockdown what was that like yeah i, I just was amazed today i just want to say that isaiah 43 scripture mm -hmm. was the scripture that um and Psalm 139 that changed it all for me five years ago that I went on a retreat and I've always been a believer but that I have redeemed you I've called you by name mm -hmm. you are honored and precious in my sight I love you yes. that love that God has for us like I always knew it in my head but I really received it in my heart in such a, a new way in a deep way and um, that changed everything for me that then prompted me to want to write this kind of music and during the pandemic it was um, kind of a, a, a time where you're just reflective you're at home you're you're it's a time I, I found a time to create and um, and so this this album came out of, of that time and I'm just I just gave it over to God and and uh, and here we are <laughs> what a beautiful story of like how God has just been interweaving and weaving you through everything and that you're using your gifts and you know the Bible says your gifts will make room for them and it's just such an honor and privilege that you're with us today because we truly see that you are evidence of that and living out your faith so Carla thank you so much for just sharing your story with us and joining us and Carla is going to sing and share a song with us you love me as I am and we just want to encourage you before we go to the song that if you are in need of any prayer today if you're walking through anything if you don't feel you're redeemed if you don't feel worthy or valuable we prayer partners that are standing by that would love to pray with you and encourage you. Well, right now we're going to go to Carla. You love me as I am.
I could not see the good. I had been drowning inside for so long, trying to hide from the shame of what I had done wrong. You open the door and you call on my name. You say. What an incredible and beautiful reminder from Carla Bianca with that song, As You Love Me As I Am. It's just something sometimes I was just sitting here just listening to that. It's just, you love me as I am. It's overwhelming <laughs> to think about it, to think about all the things we've walked through and our mistakes and the way we fall down. But God is still with us and he's over us. And he's like, I love you as you are. And he's always walking beside us no matter what we're going through, Tom, no matter what we're dealing with. He's standing right there beside us. What a great God. You know